God's praises shall continually be in my mouth. We thank you and again welcome you to this virtual worship experience. We pray that something sung, something played, something prayed, and something preached, something experienced in this moment would encourage you not only on today, but as you go throughout the rest of your week. At this time, we're going to sing our doxology, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow.
just do a little bit of it, okay?
Our call to worship comes from Psalm 134. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Amen and amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is that familiar hymn, Down at the Cross, found in your hymn book at page 243. Thank you, Lord, for yet again another day. 
a day we've never seen before, a day we'll never see again, but a day that you have made and that you've called us to rejoice and be glad in. God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for watching over us on last night. We thank you for watching over us throughout these last six months. God, we thank you for watching over us just this past week. God, for being God that sits high and looks low. But not only do you do that, you walk with us. You talk with us. You lead us along life's narrow way. And for that, we say thank you. God, we recognize and realize that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when the floodwaters came up upon us, when the mountains fell into the heart of the sea, when the earth around us was crumbling down, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would have given up a long time ago. We would have thrown in the towel a long time ago. We would have hung it up a long time ago. But thanks be to God. That encourages our souls, that encourages our mind, that strengthens our heart and our spirit. For that we say thank you. Eternal God, we ask right now that you forgive us of our shortcomings and our sins. Of things both done and left undone that have been unpleasing in your sight. That you would have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful and gracious God. Cleanse us, dear Lord. Purge us with hyssop that we may be pure as snow. Dear God, we ask right now that you would do what only you can do in this worship experience. God, we desire to experience you today. We desire to experience your holiness on today. We desire to experience your love on today. We desire to experience your Holy Spirit on today. Holy Spirit, have thine own way in this place. We submit to you, dear God, this worship experience for your glory and for our good. We ask these things in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus the Christ, who is our Savior, who is our Lord, and thanks be to God, is our returning Redeemer. In his name and in his power we do pray. Amen and amen.
Zechariah, the prophet Zechariah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Again, the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Again, that is coming from the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Bechariah, son of Idu, saying, The Lord was very angry with your ancestors. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not, like, do not be like your ancestors, to whom the former prophets proclaimed. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Return from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. They did not hear or heed me, says the Lord. Your ancestors, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your ancestors? So they repented and said, the Lord of hosts has dealt with us according to our ways and deeds, just as he planned to do. The word of God for us, the people of God, thanks be to God from all that dwells below the skies. in order to remember God's covenant with us. Hear the commandments of God to God's people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Lord have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Lord have mercy upon us Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy upon us.
shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. in these times. And so God just asks that we give a tenth of that which we have received, that which we have been blessed with. The link to our Givelify is located in the comments. Um, and you can go there now to give as our praise team gives some giving music um, that will get your heart and your soul in the mind and in the spirit of giving.
richly and bountifully bless you and your family.
We do pray that God would enlarge our territory. Those places where we are lacking, those places that seem to go missing, we ask right now that God would enlarge our territory. That God would bless us and with an increase, an increase of love, an increase of joy, an increase in peace, an increase in hope, an increase, dear God, that would uh, just take up the whole room. God, we bless for that. We ask for that. We ask for that. We ask for that. To this praise team and our musicians this morning for leading us so dutifully in worship, we give God thanks and we give God praise. To our sound and our tech ministry for holding us down, we give God thanks. To our trustee, our, our, our trustee that keeps us safe, we give God thanks. We give God thanks. And to the God that has made it all possible for us to gather and wake up this morning, we give him thanks yes. for all that God has done up until this very appointed time. God has woke us up this morning, started us on our way, clothed us in our right minds, gave us a reasonable portion of our health and our strength, gave us the activity of our limbs. If God doesn't do anything else in our lives, he's already done more than enough. More than enough, more than enough to tell him thank you, more than enough to praise his name, more than enough to have shout hallelujah, more than enough to give him all the honor, glory, and the praise. This morning, this morning, our scripture was read earlier in your hearing, but I want to read it again for you, your refreshment, so that it will be fresh. It comes from Zechariah, the sixth chapter, the first chapter, verses six through, verses one through six. Zechariah, the first chapter, the first chapter of Zechariah, the prophet Zechariah, verses one through six. And it reads, in the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Idu, saying, the Lord was very angry with your ancestors. Therefore, say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me. Thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your ancestors to whom the former prophets proclaimed. Thus says the Lord of hosts, return from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. But they did not heed nor hear, says the Lord. Your ancestors, where are they? And the prophets do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your ancestors? So they repented and said, the Lord of hosts has dealt with us according to our ways and deeds, just as he planned to do. The word of God for us, the people of God, thanks be to God. And this morning, the sermon must have a title that this be it, called to do it differently. Called to do it differently. Let us pray. Gracious and all wise God, we've gathered again to say thank you. To say thank you for the gift of a new day. To experience, dear God, all that you would have for us to experience in this day alone. Truly, you've been a good God to us. We've had food on our table, a roof over our head, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, God, you've made ways out of no ways. You've opened doors that we didn't even know needed to be opened. You've provided for us in so many ways. And God, because you've been that good to us, we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for your love. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your care. Thank you for being close to us in the time of trouble. Thank you for being our peace of mind. Thank you for being our sleep at night. Thank you for being our waking in the morning. God, we say thank you. Lord, we're grateful that we serve a God that not only sits high and looks low, but thanks be to God, walks with us and talks with us. Entered into time and space, took on human flesh to experience life the way that we experience it. And for that, we're ever grateful. We ask right now, God, you've been with us in song. You've been with us in prayer. You've been with us in scripture. God, now be with us in preaching. We ask right now that your Holy Spirit would hide now this frail and feeble preacher. And that you, the one living God, the one living spirit, the one living Savior, 
would be seen and heard in this moment. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Fall fresh in this your vessel. Fall fresh upon the airwaves. Fall fresh in homes. Fall fresh in cars. Fall fresh wherever this word may be heard. Wherever this service may be heard, dear God, fall fresh. Anoint your people anew. Strengthen us, dear God, even in these times to move on a little bit further. To see what the end's going to be. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. Amen and amen. Call to do it differently. Church, there is a spirit of transformation and newness in the atmosphere. We cannot deny that the God we serve is up to something new and different. It's taking place right in front of our eyes. Our world is changing. Our society is changing. Our churches and the way we do church is changing. In almost every area of our lives, it seems as though God is leading us into something new. As such, it is calling us ourselves to do and move differently than we have in the past as well as different than our ancestors. Church, what we must realize is that when God is doing something new and renewing in our lives, God calls us too to do things differently. God sometimes calls us to move differently than those before us. In our passage this morning, God is calling on Israel to not make the same mistakes as their ancestors, mistakes that cost them freedom, liberation, and deliverance. The prophet Zechariah, through the prophet Zechariah, God has called the people to repent of their sins, the sins that dismantle and hinder society from living up to who God called and crafted them to be. The wisdom and legacy of the ancestors is necessary for change and for moving things forward. However, we must also acknowledge if and when our ancestors have sinned against God. These aren't sins of small stature, but these are sins of silence and a go-along to get along mentality. All right. These are sins that have allowed racism to fester, grow, and mature into the beast it is today. In actuality, white people of this generation and this lifetime must choose to do things differently than their ancestors before them. While many did not own slaves or possibly did not fly the Confederate flag, the privilege that whiteness has afforded them allowed them to operate in ways of complicity when these actions took place. This morning, just as the prophet calls the nation of Israel to a place of repentance, I call us to a place of both repentance and surprise. Repentance opens us up to the possibility of God doing a new thing. As such, we've been called to do this thing called life differently than our foremothers and forefathers, a way that is more liberating, more loving, and more just. On top of this, I need you to realize this morning that just because it didn't work out for your father or your mother doesn't mean that it won't work out for you. Just because it didn't happen for your ancestors doesn't mean it won't happen for you. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God is saying I'm restoring back unto you your family, favor and joy, love and peace through you, but you've got to do things differently. You can't expect different results with the same practices. Rather, you must first repent and seek to do things differently. If you leave with nothing else from this morning's sermon, take this with you. God wants to restore and reconcile us back to God through his son, Jesus Christ. However, in order for this to happen, we must first repent of the ways in which we have failed and have failed God and the purposes of love and justice. Understand what our ancestors did wrong and seek to do things differently. Then we can see the hand of God working in us to bring forth something different. Our setting this morning takes place during the Persian period, post-Babylonian exile, during the time of rebuilding the temple. The prophet Zechariah's name means God remember, remembered. Isn't it good to know that even in the midst of suffering and shame, heartache and pain, God remembers? His name prepares him for his ministry, which will be to remind the people of their covenant with God and the building of the temple. Israel has a murky history. Israel's history is thwarted with issues of idolatry and selfishness. 
and nearly every turn they participate in a pattern. God delivers, the people rejoice. God blesses, the people rebel. God punishes, the people repent. God restores, repeat the cycle. This has plagued Israel since their days at the Red Sea. Yet, at each and every turn, God shows God's self to be faithful, to be a redeemer, and to be a restorer. Isn't that like our testimony? God has blessed us, yet we rebel and suffer the consequences. Nevertheless, God hears our plea and then restores us back to the joy of his salvation. I just wish I had a couple of witnesses in the virtual world who can attest to the relationship God has with his people. They may struggle and fall, but at every turn, God picks us up, turns us around, and places our feet on solid ground. So Zechariah steps in to warn the people that God is tired and fed up with the cycle. God wants them to move differently than their ancestors. God wants them to accomplish greater in the will of God. God wants to restore back everything that the canker worm and the locust devoured. But in order to do this, they must live into the covenant God has made with them. No more taking the name of God in vain, not simply through poor word choices, but in not believing God will do what God said God would do. No more dishonoring the elders, but supporting and affirming the work of the elders. No more murdering their neighbor, but loving them and looking out for them instead. These are the steps Zechariah is trying to get the people to take in order for them to be righteous before God. And to do this takes imagination. It takes the words and the works of the prophets to live and do life differently. It takes eradicating the old and uninspired with the new and the life giving. Truly, having an imagination that seeks to expand the vision of God is necessary for Israel to live into who God has called them to be. Not only does it take imagination, but it also takes repentance. I know that's not a word that we like to hear, that's not used too often in the 21st century, but repentance is still necessary according to the will of God. Repentance is key to understanding the ways of God and the restoration of God. Repentance essentially says, I turn away, I do a 180 from the very thing that is severing my relationship with God, and I move forward in a path that is both pleasing to God and healing for myself. It can be difficult, however, because just as Israel, we develop patterns in our relationship with God. Patterns that have our typical response, our typical language, our typical reactions, and go about our normal day. Nevertheless, whatever the case may be, and however long we've been in it, God through Zechariah is saying that it's not only the way, that it's not the only way, and that it doesn't have to be like this. Now is the time for you to do something different toward the covenant and toward your life. We are too far from where Zechariah stands in his message today. Throughout the world, the prophets of old and of those of today, we hear, we hear the call to do something different. We're hearing the call not just to not be racist, but to actively be anti-racist. We're hearing the call of tearing down monuments of hate to build and erect statues that embody our better angels. We hear calls across society to do education, school, jobs, church, and so much more differently than how we have in the past. And why is this? It's because the ways of old at times left many in the dark or out of the scope. It left people on the sidelines instead of in the game where they deserve to be. And as such in the creation of a new society, a new way of thinking, we expand the privileges once bestowed on only a few, to many. Church, it's no secret that we as a nation must and a world must repent. We must repent of our silence. We must repent of our complicity. We must repent of our idolatry for making things, for making things, for making things and items and people, economic systems, race, class, gender, sexuality, making those gods. We've turned things that were never gods at all into idols that have been worshiped and that must stop. Time to stop glorifying the dirt of our past and repent. 
moving in a new way, moving differently than our ancestors. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper on today, we must realize that Jesus Christ's act in the meal and in his crucifixion signify God doing something different. The dinner, the table, signifies open access to anyone who would like to cultivate a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. The murder on the cross means that those powers, empire, religious, social, no longer have the power to take life from us. While we must still fight and pray while it is day, these powers no longer can steal our joy. For it rests in the care, our joy, rests in the care of a Savior who bore their ability, the power's ability, to take it from us on the cross. So, when you partake in these earthly elements, realize that you are taking part and are signing up to be a part of something different. Different in the way we live. Different in the way we think. Different in the way we seek to aid and uplift one another. Different in how we organize our priorities. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. 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 Church, truly we've been called to do something different in this world as we see things changing all around us. The church hasn't been called to sit on the sidelines. Church hasn't been called to repeat the mistakes of yesterday, but rather the church has been called to be involved in the things of today. It's been called to tear down those strongholds. It's been called to tear down those monuments made to and in worship of idolatrous things. God has called us, maybe not physically to tear down those monuments, but God has called us to tear down those spiritual monuments that have been made. God has called for us to do that. And so this morning, if you're unaware or unsure of what God has called you to do in this moment, I know a man that can guide you, that can lead you, that can direct you, that can help you understand what you've been called to do in this moment. And his name is Jesus. Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus will guide you and lead you along life's narrow way. This morning, we extend now the opportunity. We do a threefold call. The first call is to accept Christ as your Savior. Accept Jesus the Christ as your Savior, as your Lord, and as your Redeemer. The one who will accept your repentance and guide you in the new way. The second call is for anyone looking for a church home. Because truly, you can't do something new all by yourself. We can't do it by ourselves. We have to be in community to do it together. And what better place to be than Turner's Chapel AME Church to join our virtual, our virtual worship experience, but also join us as a body of believers. And that last call is if you're needing prayer, to simply drop a line in the comments or drop us a line in the inbox, and we'll be sure to lift you up on our Monday morning prayer line. Amen. And amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you're calling us to do something different. In a time when things are falling down, crumbling down, you're calling us to build. You're calling us to restore. You're calling us to heal. You're calling for us to manufacture and be a part of the building and the unfolding of your kingdom here on earth. As such, God, we pray right now that you would give us the strength, the will, and the mentality to do just that. We ask these things, dear God, that as we move differently in this world, it might be a light to someone else. It might be an encouragement to someone else. It might be help or aid to someone else. We pray this, asking for this. We pray for our sick and our shut-in, those bereaved families and those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Asking, dear God, right now that you would visit the sick and shut-in. Comfort them and keep them. Remind them, dear God, that you've not left them nor have you forsaken them. Remind them that you are with them even in their darkest hours. God, as we get ready to participate in this 
Lord's Supper. Might we be reminded, might we be encouraged, and might we know that in this meal, we sign up to do life differently. We sign up to do life differently. We sign up to say that the powers of this world have no power over us. We sign up to say that the Holy Ghost has given us something that the world can't, didn't give, and that the world can't take away. We sign up to be movers and shakers. We sign up to cast down the spirit of silence and complicity. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. And the people of God said amen and amen. our service of Holy Communion. Um, on yesterday, if you picked up your elements, you may go and grab them now. Um, have them with you as we get ready to go through the service of Holy Communion. truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and who intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in God's holy ways draw near with faith and take the holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to almighty God let us recite and repeat our general confession almighty God father of our Lord Jesus Christ Maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God.
we do not presume to come to this dying table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not so worthy as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Oh. Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed took the bread.
unto him be majesty, dominion, honor, glory, and power, now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen.